more on Pop Culture Radio. Here's Chris. You know, I was thinking uh, during the break that what does your family um, think of your artwork? Are they uh, very conservative? Or do they like look at your work and go, okay, do we need to take our son to counseling? What do they think of your work? Uh, the counseling part I don't think has to do necessarily with my work. I think in general <laughs> they just want to take me to counseling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, as I said uh, earlier, you know, every, everyone in my family was fairly artistic. So I think, I think they, they like it. Um, you know, it's it's different when you're looking at, let's say, your parents who are uh, 60, 70 years old. Uh, they may not uh, have the same opinions or they may not even understand, you know, half of the stuff that I've done here. Uh, but not to take anything away from them at all. See, I'm going to get it if they listen to this. <laughs> but um, basically, I mean, they've been very, very supportive. Uh, and I think that's, that's uh, wonderful. Yeah. And... Um, they fairly enjoy my work. Uh, uh, you know, my dad used to do painting, so uh, he likes to see what I've uh, what I've been doing. He's interested in all the different techniques and all the different uh, uh, differences between, let's say, painting on on uh, canvas uh, versus uh, papyrus. And uh, you know, I mean, the, in a way, in some, uh, it's brought us even actually uh, closer to. We have other topics now to talk about. It's just been great. They've been very, very supportive. You know, if you could sit down with uh, another person, or say two people in your life uh, that that you would love, you know, past or present, uh, famous people, non-famous, just two people you could hang out with and learn from, you know, over lunch. Uh, who are those two people that you would have hang out with you? Uh, anybody in the world, dead or alive? Well, I think you have to definitely say Lady Gaga and George Michael. I, th I think uh, I'm completely joking. Um, uh, <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, half our audience just turned off. Nice, nice job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I mean, for me, there there are too many people out there. Uh, there, there it's uh, you know, I'm I'm into surrealism. Uh, so Salvador Dali, I would love to pick his brain. Uh, H.R. Geiger, I think, is, is incredible, you know, the, creative, the creator of Aliens and so on and so forth. Uh, there, there's really too many people uh, uh, to name, and there's a lot of really contemporary artists uh, working on the Sunrise Artists um, Project magazine. I've met so many contemporary artists that, you know, maybe some people out there uh, don't, um, don't necessarily know, who have just been, you know, incredible, and you can the work that they've done has either influenced me or has basically challenged me to to become better as an artist. What are some of the things that you think that a lot of people don't know about the art world that you would like to convey to them and say, you know, these are some things that you need to pay attention if you want to become an artist. What are those some of the things that surprised surprised you uh, about the art world or that you would let tell people to watch out for? Um, <laughs> I think one thing that people, I don't know if they necessarily know it or not, but really um, being in the art world is, it's, or trying to become an artist is very difficult, very, very difficult. And basically, uh, somebody once compared it, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, I was talking to, to a curator, the person said, you know, that, that, that basically it's like going into Hollywood and trying to become a celebrity. You know, you have... Uh, hundreds of thousands of people out there that are painting, well, what makes you better than the other ones? Well, there are different factors. It's obviously quality of work, but, you know, uh, who you know is extremely important also. Uh, it's all about how, whether you know how to sell yourself to. You know, you, you sometimes go to, to galleries and you see that the person has put, you know, some sprinkled some grass on the floor and then they have, you know, 15 pages uh, describing the, what that the, this grass represents the suffering of the Kosovo refugees or something. And uh, they're really good at selling themselves. They were able to make it there. They're selling their art. They're fantastic at marketing them. So whether the art is good or not, I mean, you know, that's up to the, <laughs> the viewers to decide, I guess. You but know, uh, the, that was one of the big things I, uh, that you come to realize as, as you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, get yourself established that, you know, it's, uh, it's really not that easy. You know, and you were talking about in the first uh, segment about that during, the, and I had the same uh, situation happen uh, to me when I finished art school, is that art school did not prepare you for the reality of the financial and, uh, you know, the whole 
thing that you have to go through with the art where they didn't prepare, prepare you. They tell you how to mix paint, but they don't tell you how it works. The art world works. You're, you're kind of left high and dry. Um, talk about that a little bit where what the difference between art going to school and then the real world, the things you have to learn about, about marketing, about budgeting, about understanding how the world of art works outside of actually the paint on the canvas. Well, uh, once you once you leave school, basically, I think everybody who who has been in the industry for for a little while, they they know the the twenty eighty rule, uh, which is twenty percent you're creating work, eighty percent you're supposed to sell yourself and market yourself. And uh, the more and more uh, uh, you know uh, I create work, the more I realize that well, let's if I if I don't spend eighty percent of my time getting my work out there and meeting new people and contacting galleries and so on, then it's never going to go anywhere. Nobody's ever going to even know about it. Uh, nowadays, you also have, you know, the whole technology side of things where you have to have a grasp uh, of, you know, the different, um, different tools, different, you know, let's say social media platforms and so on and how to use them. Uh, whereas a lot of artists, you know, tend to stay away from that. I think school should have a mandatory class that teaches you how to set up a basic blog or a website, um, and uh, uh, they should have a basic class on marketing and a basic class on, you know, uh, just general business um, business information. Uh, just and these should be mandatory. I don't think these should be, you know, optional. And I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, a lot of artists uh, who are currently at school are going to say well, you're completely crazy. We don't want to do any of that, but Without without that without that knowledge, uh, it, it's very difficult. You know, you you end up becoming the cliche of that. Every, you know how everybody says, well, artists are just you know uh, selling uh, burgers at McDonald's. All right. Yeah, I think that's I think that's true. I think well, well when you're in, but I think the problem is a lot of the art professors um, are are disgruntled artists themselves. So they almost I think enjoy the fact that you struggle. You know, when yes, you get out. No, you know I've. I've I've actually heard exactly uh, the statement you just made. I've heard it by, uh, from many people. I agree with it to some degree. And at the, at the other end, I find that these, uh, these teachers, these art teachers, uh, they should be teaching you purely about the art, about the techniques, about the history, and so on. This is, this is what they should be doing. You, you can't expect um, you know, an art teacher to come and talk to you about, you know, uh, how, how to price your art or how to put together, uh, you know, a marketing campaign right. for your work. You know, that should be a an arts marketing expert. Right. No, no that's probably true. I, I, I've never heard of it that way, but you're probably right that, you know, it, having them maybe wearing two hats would be, uh, you know, maybe they would have a... Um, conflict of interest so but 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 with most colleges you know have a business program so maybe one of those professors are the ones that should be teaching exactly. you know the marketing and and because it is a product as much as everybody says it's about the art when it boils down to it it's still marketing 101 everything comes down to can you get people to like your product or yep. make sure that it gets in front of them so they can make a decision and you know uh let's talk about that a little bit when you decide to do an art show um for the young people that are listening out there that think about maybe becoming an artist and, you know, following your, your, your trail or being like you, and they have a background, you know, from the Middle East and they look at you and go, well, he did it. I can do it too. Explain to them how to approach a gallery. How should they talk to a curator? What are some uh, tips that you would give those young people out there? Well, I mean, I think that it's, it's different in every case. It also depends on the type of type of art that you're creating. Uh, my art is slightly out there. Uh, when you're dealing with surrealism, I mean, you have different types of surrealism too. I've had people telling me that the art that I've uh, I've made, uh, you know, the subject matter is very difficult to sell. So I've had a lot of uh, a lot of people that have rejected the work, not because of the quality of it, but they're saying, you know, people don't buy uh, art for its looks, or at least serious buyers. Serious buyers purchase art because of uh, the concepts and ideas because of the story that the art actually ha it tells. Right, yeah. Definitely. And uh, so basically that makes my art very difficult to sell because the subject matter is not necessarily something that's very commercial. But that doesn't bother me. I prefer doing something that I love, that I find interesting, rather than, you know, painting flowers 
or landscapes and things like that, which there's nothing wrong with that. But the approach for all of these is a little bit different, I find. If you're doing something fairly commercial, you know, you have, let's say, in one uh, in Montreal, you may have, you know, 100 galleries that you can approach, uh, and maybe what they want, they may want is, you know, quantity versus uh, versus, let's say. Uh, a certain specific theme or something like that. Where, but in my case, I realized, you know, just looking, let's say, at the Montreal landscape, there's maybe four or five places where where you could possibly hang my art and it won't clash with everything else that's there. So my approach had to be very different. I had to make sure that uh, the work is extremely polished. So if I wasn't ha- happy enough with, with the, the current collection that I have, I would not approach... Uh, a certain gallery you know you, ha- you also have to be extremely professional you have to uh, be able to talk about your art we you can't just you know say here it is uh, you know the the um, usually the gallery owners the curators and so on they expect you to be able to you know come to the gallery when there's a vernissage and uh, and uh, speak about your work speak about yourself your techniques and so on and so forth. So you really have to, you know, practice that. And this all comes down again to market. Uh, you know, it's just marketing your work, making a nice little package. Your portfolio is this this product, as sad as that may sound, it's right. a product. Right. And th- you're selling this product to these gallery owners. And if you can sell that idea, if you're good enough at selling it, you're going to get it. If you're not good enough, then you're going to have to get some help and get some people to, uh, you know, maybe some agents. You know, some people have had success with that. Some people not so much. Would you say a lot of artists, uh, their biggest problem or one of the problems is not being realistic about their artwork, not knowing what category it fits in and trying to, because I know when I owned a gallery, you, people would come in and they would show me artwork that had nothing to do with my gallery. They were trying to get me to let them be in our, my gallery and and their artwork would not fit in my gallery. Is that some of the problems you see even in Canada or just in your life uh, being an artist where people just are unrealistic about where their art fits? Oh, I've had some people, you know, but working on the Sunrise Artist magazine, I've worked uh, with a lot of experts in the industry and a lot of the curators and a lot of the uh, contemporary artists. And, you know, a lot of the curators, what they tell me is basically uh, it's just that. They say, you know, every day we have two, three hundred portfolios coming in and the people don't even pay attention to what we're actually selling here. They just send it out to everyone and it's a waste of time and we just basically throw whatever we get, it goes directly into the trash uh, because they don't bother researching the gallery itself. Uh, that's It's fairly important. You have to know the gallery. You have to get to know the people that are there. You have to maybe go to a couple of vernissages at that gallery uh, uh, to see whether you really want your work there. Right. It's not just about sending it out to a bunch of people. You're not applying at a job at McDonald's. <laughs> you know, so you don't send your resume to 55 uh, you know, McDonald's to see which one of them hits. Right, you really right. have to do research on the gallery and learn about it and see whether you, you fit before you approach. So we're up against a, a break. Tell people where you're, uh, how they can look at your artwork. Uh, well, uh, you, uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone can go to payamontazami.com uh, and uh, I'll obviously spell it. Uh, so P-A-Y-A-M-M-O-N-T-A-Z-A-M-I.com. Uh, hopefully you'll post the link for some of our listeners here. You can go check it out there. I'm all, uh, there'll be links to Facebook. There'll be links to Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn and so on. So go check it out and let me know what you think. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Pop Culture Radio with Chris Wakefield. We will be back in just a moment. To find out more about Pop Culture Radio, our guests, and to listen to past programs, go to popcultureradio.net. 